So how does an MRI machine work? Well, uh, there are several parts to it. Uh, for example, there's a static magnetic field coil, there's a radio frequency coil, there's gradient field coils, and many other, uh, many other apparata. Now, we will really focus only on the first three, because the first three really put MRI in MRI. So let's start with the static magnetic field. If you take an MRI machine, and this is just a picture of a standard um, MRI machine, what it does is that it generates a very strong magnetic field in the order of 1 Tesla, 1.5 Tesla, 3 Tesla, 7 Tesla. Um, and these are strong magnetic fields. Now, and that is why it, you have to be careful when you approach an MRI machine because it is like a giant magnet. So how do we create a magnetic field? Well, there are various ways of doing this. Generally speaking, uh, one way of doing this is a so-called Helmholtz pair. Now see, what you do in a Helmholtz pair, you, you create two loops, which you're seeing here, and, and you put them far away from each other, um, as far as their radius. And then you, you inject energy inside these loops. Now, uh, um, excuse me, you then inject electricity inside these loops. As electricity flows through these loops, it creates a magnetic field. Now, one way to do it is a Helmholtz pair. Uh, a more popular way of doing it is a so-called solenoid. So really, you create a coil, and that's why we often refer to the static magnetic field as a coil. Um, you, loop, um, uh, you loop a coil, and then, again, you put electricity through it, and as, as the electric charges flow through the coil, they will generate a magnetic field, a very strong magnetic field. The truth is that today, most MRI machines um, use a combination of solenoid and Helmholtz pair. So you can use this and inject uh, strong currents through these coils in order to generate um, a, a strong static magnetic field. Uh, again, when somebody says my MRI is 1.5 Tesla or my MRI is 3 Tesla or 7 Tesla, what they mean is the strength of the static magnetic field, also known as B0 or B0, is 1.5 Tesla, 3 Tesla, 7 Tesla. Uh, with, with Tesla being a unit of measurement of strength of magnetic field. So MRI is based on the phenomenon of nuclear magnetic resonance, or NMR, which is why often MRI is referred to as NMR. Now, nuclear magnetic resonance is the ability of certain nuclei um, to, uh, when they're placed inside a strong magnetic field, to absorb high frequency radio wave and then to re-emit them. Remember, I told you that all imaging works by some source emitting an energy, the energy being absorbed by something that modifies it and then re-emits it. Well, in order to do an MR, excuse me, in order to do MRI, um, we use protons that have this ability, that have the ability to receive energy when, when they're placed inside a strong magnetic field, like the static magnetic field, and then uh, re-emit it. Now, when does an atom have NMR properties? Well, it needs to have two things. It needs to have charge, and spin. For example, charge is a proton. A proton has positive charge. See, if you take, if you look at the image on the left, A, now this is a proton, and as you can tell from the little pluses, it has positive charge. Now, if you take the proton and you, and it, if it also has spin, as it spins and as these positive charges travel in space, essentially they will create currents, and as they create currents, they generate magnetic fields. So in order to do MRI, we need to use nuclei that are capable of absorbing energy, which will be in the, in the frequency, in the radio frequency range, and then re-emit it so that we can do imaging. Now, typically, um, virtually all of the MRI that is done um, in cognitive neuroscience is based on hydrogen which obviously has one 
the hydrogen inside nuclear um, water molecules, which of course has one proton. So is amenable, so does have a charge and spin. Now, how do we use protons in the static magnetic field? Well, see, when if you take uh, some protons depicted here and you look at them uh, inside the Earth's magnetic field, which is just about 0.6 Gauss, to give you proportionality, 0.6 Gauss is just about 0 0.00006 Tesla. So it's much weaker than a magnetic field. Uh, if you take a number of protons, and, and you look at them, how they orient um, inside uh, the Earth's magnetic field, because it's so weak, they're almost oriented randomly. So for example, uh, this proton right here is pointing this way and is spinning around this axis. Uh, maybe this proton is spinning, is, is oriented and spinning around the axis that is oriented this way. This proton is oriented this other way and spins about that axis. Now, what is interesting, is that if you take these protons and you put them inside a strong magnetic field, for example, 1.5 Tesla or 3 Tesla, which are fairly conventional magnetic field strengths in MRI. And see, what I'm showing here in this axis is the magnetic field of the MRI machine and the direction of it. See, what will happen is that if you put the protons inside the magnetic field of the MRI machine, protons will either align with the magnetic field or against. In fact, they won't quite align, but just like tops, they will precess about an axis that is either parallel to the direction of the magnetic field. So you can see that, see that the orange protons are precessing, just like tabletops, around an axis that is pointing in the same direction as the big B0 magnetic field. See this one too? This proton here is precessing about an axis that is in the same, that is parallel to the magnetic field. And so is the one down here. Now, other protons instead align in the anti-parallel position, which means they start precessing about an axis that is pointing in the opposite direction to the magnetic field. So in this example, the parallel protons precess about an axis that is pointed upwards, because that's the direction of the main magnetic field, the anti-parallel are, are precessing about an axis that is pointing downwards. Now, it so happens that protons don't line up exactly 50-50 parallel and anti-parallel. Um, as it turns out, um, there is a very slight advantage for uh, aligning with the magnetic field as opposed to against. So, so there's a slight um, advantage for protons to align uh, parallel as opposed to anti-parallel to the magnetic field. And this um, depends also on the strength of the magnetic field. The stronger the magnetic field, the more protons will align with the magnetic field, or rather will precess about an axis that is aligned with the magnetic field, like the three orange pro uh, protons, and the fewer will precess about an axis that is pointing in the anti-parallel direction. As I was saying, at room temperature, the difference between the number of protons that point parallel versus those that point anti-parallel is just about 0.003% of the protons. So in Earth's magnetic field, which is 0.6 Gauss, the difference between the protons that are pointing, uh, that are precessing about an axis that is pointing parallel to the Earth's magnetic field versus anti-parallel is a 0 0.0000018. And the stronger the magnetic field, um, the stronger the magnetic field, um, the, the more uh, uh, protons proportionally will be pointing in the parallel direction. So for example, at 1.5 Tesla, uh, it's a 0.045% more protons that align in the parallel direction. At 3 Tesla, it's 0.09% 
more protons that align in the parallel direction and at higher magnetic fields, uh, for example, seven Tesla, uh, it's 0.21% of protons more that align parallel to the magnetic field. Um, so um, if you think of these protons altogether, because there's a slightly more protons that are pointing upwards, remember these protons, they have charge and spin. So they're generating small magnetic currents, each one of them. Now, those that point upwards are generating a magnetic current in that direction. Those that are pointing downwards in the anti-parallel position are generating a magnetic uh, field in the opposite direction. Because there's a few, a little more of those pointing a parallel versus anti-parallel, this means that there's a net vector. If you were to sum up the magnetic field um, for example, in this illustration, there are three pointing up, two pointing down. So there's a not net magnetic field pointing upwards of exactly one unit. So if you were to put together the magnetic fields of all these protons, the net product is that they create a slight magnetic field pointing upwards. To give an example, uh, let's say that this is B, B0, the main magnetic field. You take protons, you put them inside um, a magnetic field, a strong magnetic field, they align either parallel or, or anti-parallel, but a couple more parallel. As a result, there's a net, there's a net uh, vector, there's a net magnetic vector that is created. And we refer to that as M0. So B0 is the static magnetic field, is the three Tesla of your MRI machine. M0 is the small difference between all the magnetic fields of all the protons that are pointing parallel with the MRI machine versus all the protons that are pointing anti-parallel to the MRI machine. Okay, so let's recap what we've learned so far. You can take uh, some protons, for example, in our case, hydrogen protons. And if you were to look at them in the Earth's magnetic field, they are aligned more or less randomly because it's not a very strong magnetic field. However, if you put them inside the strong magnetic field of an MRI machine, B0, uh, for example, 1.5 Tesla or 3 Tesla, they will orient spontaneously. And they will orient more or less 50-50 in the parallel direction and, 50, uh, and, and the other half in the anti-parallel direction. However, there's a small delta in favor of protons aligning in the parallel direction. And the delta depends on the strength of the magnetic field. So the stronger the MRI magnetic field, um, the stronger will be the delta, the greater will be the delta between protons that align parallel versus anti-parallel. And now, if you, if you then look at the net result of having a few more protons pointing in one direction versus the other, it means that together they generate a net magnetic field, which we refer to as M0.